perceived. No, I was just saying that's uncanny because this is, you know, calling out fake news before it was even a nomenclature. Uh, and the fact that, you know, we see every day the media has now become um, an instrument in some ways, large sections of it, there are always notable exceptions, a large uh, section of media has become instrument uh, of polarization, of, of division, instead of bringing people together. I want you to share some of the more sort of, um, you know, one or two of the passages, if you can, you know, there's, there's a, there's, we debate freedom, we debate where does someone's freedom end? We talk about free speech. We talk about, you know, today the media would sometimes hide behind the free speech debate to, to justify uh, some of the more poisonous things that are that are said. What do you think Nanak Singh would have wanted today's India to know before you share that passage? What do you think Nanak Singh would have wanted his Bharat to be wary of today? I think he would have uh, uh, wanted us uh, to be very mindful uh, of the use of uh, religion uh, as a tool in the hands of whether it's religious leaders or politicians. He wants us to uh, recognize that there are these dangers lurking. And, 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 and once you uh, light the fires of uh, communal hatred, that conflagration can consume you as well. Uh, you may not be in a position to put out. It, it's kind of the classic uh, uh, case of uh, uh, letting, uh, you know, creating a Frankenstein and not being able to then control uh, yeah. the, the the monster uh, that that you've unleashed, uh, and it comes to, to 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 bite you. So, so I think he is, uh, and he just wants us to, you know, when he says uh, there's, there's, there's a beautiful little passage uh, which is semi autobiographical where he's telling us the trauma that he faced uh, when he saw the violence around him in 1947. He went into complete depression, and then he turned to the scriptures to uh, uh, kind of uh, find uh, solace once again and, and get his own sort of uh, uh, composure back. And there's a very short passage that uh, that he uh, uh, reads, which is kind of emblematic of his his philosophy. He says, Ek noor se sab jag upjaya, kaun pale, kaun mande. Kabir's message from one light, the entire universe was created. How can some be good and some be uh, bad? Uh, and he picks up these, 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 these scriptures uh, and, 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 and starts uh, uh, reading from uh, there. And he says, he read the scriptures for another two hours before gently placing the gutka on the table. Uh, Sorry, I think uh, that there's, a, there's another one that I've missed out. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Find it, find it. Yeah, yeah. He read the hymns for half an hour or a bit longer with full concentration. His mind alert and curious as he soaked in the deeper message of the text. He read the sections penned by the first guru, then of the fifth guru, before moving on to the verses written by Sant Kabir and Baba Kabir, and the savayas composed by the tenth guru. As he absorbed the simplicity and essence of the message, the cobwebs that had clouded his vision began to dissipate. He felt a new sensation permeate his body, a kind of bliss that he had never experienced. A new picture was being framed in the window of his mind, one in which he could see Guru Nanak, Prophet Muhammad, Lord Ram and Krishna, Jesus Christ, Kabir, Farid, and Guru Gobind Singh all sitting together in one harmonious group. It was hard to make out who among that group was a Hindu, who was a Sikh, and who was a Muslim. Each face bore a profoundly spiritual expression. Each glowed with the same halo. Uh, that's the message he wants us to take, right, Varka? That, 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 uh, and you look at those old pictures, uh, the, uh, whether of Christianity or Islam, of or, uh, uh, Sikhism or Hinduism, and there is that, 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 that sense that you get. And what strikes me also is that, you know, there's an entire generation that I think came after your grandfather's generation, which was, which equated being progressive with being non-religious. Now, of course, how religious you are, how you interpret religion is a personal choice, but he was clearly devoutly Sikh. His Sikh identity meant 
something to him. He's invoking the, 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 the you know, the gurus where he's talking about amity. And I find that so relevant for today because today people who are trying to take on religious orthodoxy don't have a language of religion. Uh, you know, so many people have grown up without any cultural rootedness, without any, you know, a very westernized idea, as it were, of secularism. So talk a little bit about that. Clearly, he was the antithesis of that. He, he was, and I think he, he wants us to go deeper into the underlying message of what the gurus were saying, of spirituality, of the oneness of mankind. That's, that's what he wants us to take away. Uh, not our uh, uh, um, superficial understandings uh, based on half a dozen slogans uh, and the bigotry that it might uh, uh, provoke. Um, you know, uh, the, why does he want us to take home the message of Kudrat ke sab bande? Ek noor se sab jag upjaya kaun pale kaun mande? Uh, that's your antidote against the othering of other communities, right? That we are all the same creed, creed of humanity. Uh, and, and it's such a robust secularism. And, and Barkha, I think what is so important, I think, is that he is saying this in 1948 when passions were so inflamed, uh, when, 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 when uh, it was almost anathema. Uh, to uh, say something like this about other uh, uh, faiths, he there's a there's a very visual, very graphic pas passage in the early part of the book where he hears the sounds of a mob assembling. Uh, he hears the shouting and he thinks, "Oh my God, this is now the Muslims gathering uh, to uh, target a Sikh neighborhood after their neighborhood was targeted in uh, in arson attacks last night." And he goes there and he says, instead of seeing a, a sea of Muslim skullcaps, he sees a, a row of uh, uh, black turbans. Uh, and and these, instead of seeing, uh, hearing slogans of Ya Allah, Ya Hussein, he's hearing Bole Sonehal. And this is a Sikh mob on the rampage, targeting mm -hmm. every Muslim establishment and even targeting uh, a, a Muslim uh, homes and, and killing women and children. And this idealistic young man so uh, satnam desperately goes there and shouts that hey khalsa ji stop which religion which which guru has taught you this that you should raise your arms against a, an unarmed person and, and 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 that's why he he really wants us to understand the message of what is behind every religion and that i think holds true for islam it holds true for hinduism sikhism jainism yeah. uh, today I, I, and I keep going back because of my sort of experience with the Middle East. Half the stuff that you are tragically witnessing in Gaza wouldn't be happening if you had a better uh, empathy towards uh, towards uh, others. And at some other point in history, the Jews would have said that for themselves. And that is the point, right? Today, what's happening in Gaza is so disturbing. Before that, the Holocaust was so disturbing. And I'm just speaking to the sort of universal... And what happened October 7th was so disturbing, right? Absolutely. All of it. All of it. And, 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 but, but I think the contemporary relevance of books like these is that they look at your underlying uh, uh, ills uh, or mm. causes and, and, and what uh, uh, triggers uh, these passions. I want you to speak a little bit about why uh, reading this today reminded you so much of Gaza. So, but I'll tell you why Gaza resonates with me so much. Uh, not just because I learned Arabic and uh, spent 12 years of my life in the uh, in the region. But when you look at the history, uh, the Balfour Declaration in 1917, the UN Partition Plan on Palestine in 1947, a land claimed by two people, both uh, feel that they have a legitimate uh, claim on it. Um, and what you've seen since then, um, not just in Gaza, but also in the West Bank, but particularly in Gaza in the last uh, 20 years or so, is this relentless cycle of violence, counter-violence, revenge, retribution. Uh, you know, a couple of years back when you had the last round of violence in uh, Gaza in uh, 2021, I wrote a longish piece which said, until next time, because you could also almost see uh, that the next time is going to come around very soon, and sure enough, it did in, in October 23. Um, and then when, you, uh, when I was translating this uh, Game of Fire, and I was reading this very powerful passage about this young girl, Krishna, uh, addressing this group of hot-headed 12 uh, young men who are out to 
commit arson against five Muslim neighborhoods and literally burn them down to the ground. And she makes a very impassioned plea to them, uh, saying, yes, I know you're angry. Yes, I know uh, uh, that uh, the uh, innocent Hindus and uh, uh, Sikhs killed by Muslims in Potohar was wrong. But what will you achieve by this violence? Uh, particularly against the innocent women and children who will die. And there's this really graphic uh, reference uh, that, that's there about, um, she says, think of those uh, little kids whose uh, feet haven't even felt the clay and the ground of our uh, galis and mohallas. Um, and when I was translating that, it took me to the many images that we've seen uh, from the horrors of Gaza, all those uh, disembodied children, all of those uh, uh, scenes of carnage. Uh, and it set me thinking that this is perhaps why these books are called classics, because they are as relevant today as they were 75 years ago, and because of the universality, because you can almost extrapolate what Nanak Singh is saying about Punjab, about Amritsar in 1947, uh, and take it to Gaza in 2023-24, or in Sudan, or in any of the numerous conflict spots that you see around the world? Well, a lot to think